This is Achillea uh, Yero. Does really great in hot, dry spots. I don't know the cultivar, but it's giving you some really nice color. Here we are, it's late May. Uh, into early June, we'll have some blooms. That would be Achillea. And then this is purple coneflower where we've got one bloom early. See it down there? So purple coneflower, uh, again, late May, late June, uh, early July, we've got our purple coneflower coming into bloom. And that's, uh, you know, that's also, this is, this is uh, I use purple coneflower quite a bit because it's, it's beautiful and it's one of those plants that you can't kill and it also doesn't spread too aggressively. You know, I used to do, I used to do a lot of Black Eyed Susan because it's gorgeous. Um, but Black Eyed Susan spreads like wildfire through the garden, whereas purple coneflower stays more clumpy. So I, I like to use purple coneflower more. And then over here, uh, this is some Lily of the Valley, which I've never actually planted in my life, but um, that's Convalaria magis, Lily of the Valley. Okay, and then we've got some uh, daylilies coming up over here. Hemerocallis, I don't know the cultivar. And then uh, this, uh, this is a weed. It's a very pretty weed, but that's a weed. I would pull that if I was maintaining this garden. And then this is columbine, which has already bloomed, aquilegia. And you'll see this growing, uh, if you look hard enough, you'll see this growing in the woodlands. Maybe not this cultivar, but um, columbine actually usually grows more in a, in a partial shade situation where the soil is a little wet, but not too wet, but uh, it, seems to be, it seems to be quite happy there. And then here we've got a little bit more of that uh, Centauria Montana. And there's our Lupine. And then here's one. Uh, this is Liatris. Um, Liatris Spicata, I believe, is that one. Uh, it's good for natural plantings around here. It's, it's clumpy, it doesn't spread very quickly, and then it's going to have purple spikes um, through the summer. And Liatris, what was I going to say, Liatris purple spikes through the summer. Oh, and the, the most popular cultivar of Liatris is Kobold, which is a, is a, a more compact purple one. But I know there are some out there that come in white as well. Um, and then back here, uh, this is, um, oh, Penstemon digitalis husker red. And this is actually something you'll see growing. You'll see Penstemon digitalis growing natively if you go to, uh, to the woodlands around here. But um, husker red is the cultivar you'll usually see growing because it's got this nice reddish color. And so I do use Penstemon quite a bit because it's, it's uh, drought tolerant, easy to grow, looks really cool this time of the year. And then what you can do with your Penstemon is once it's done blooming, just cut the whole plant back three to six inches from the ground. It'll bush up again for you, look really nice. And this is a... So you see back here, you see these you see these plants here? This is, uh, I don't know if this is a hookera or a tiarella, um, but it's got a clump of leaves and then it's got these spikes. And this is another one that the reason I recognize it a little more is I did a woodland planting where I had to use one. Uh, I don't know the cultivar, but I don't know if you can see back there, there's like a clump. It, it's, it's a mounding clump of foliage and then it has these little flower spikes above it. And once the spikes are done blooming, you just go ahead and cut those back. We have a peony, which uh, I don't know if this was a volunteer. There was a peony at some point in the garden over there. Uh, we've got some Coreopsis. And this is the upright one. So I believe this would be Zagreb, the cultivar. Uh, this is going to flower most of the summer. Small yellow flowers, uh, pretty tough to kill. Can't go wrong with that one. And then it'll, it'll slowly kind of keep spreading. And I've stopped using, uh, the, there's, there's a greb, which is the upright one. And I'll have to look it up. I don't remember the name. There's one that spreads more. Um, I don't use Coreopsis as much because 
it'll by midsummer it starts to kind of uh, slow down on the flowers and then I'll just cut the whole thing back but then it just looks kind of like a hole uh, in the garden and, and Coreopsis it'll it'll spread slowly through time but it's it just every year it'll take another five or six inches of the garden and it's kind of like black-eyed Susan where uh, it, it takes things over and then it's tough to get rid of so I, I don't do I don't do Coreopsis that often. The upright one is Zagreb, and there's one, I think it's called Moonshine. Moonshine, maybe? There's the upright one is Zagreb, and the spreader, I think, is Moonshine. 